I'm going to break this uh, video down into different sections but um, this is Project Unity as it stands at the moment um, it was called Unity uh, from the original Alpha Mega um, because I discovered that there were some very obscure um, and very expensive old retro systems that are uh, very hard to get hold of and the games were quite bad so I couldn't call it Alpha Amiga on the basis of having everything when it didn't have everything so Unity seems a very very good and apt name on the basis that the whole point of the system is to unify uh, a load of different consoles made by different manufacturers into one base unit um, working independently but all working together and that's the main emphasis for this project and it does that because it uses one voltage supply uh, which is supplied from a 12 volt uh, 6 amp supply um, it also has one video, audio video um, output, which is via SCART, and also one master controller. Um, so there's one controller, one video, one power supply for everything. This bank of switches is there to um, ensure that each console can work independently. I've got 16 separate contacts per console, um, 8 sets for the audio video and the other side for the controller. You can therefore select which system you're going to utilize and it will um, only use those for working into the master controller. It keeps it separate. The video line all connects into the SCART and I've also got a facility here where it can automatically tell the system to work into RGB mode uh, as opposed to composite and there's also a little switch up here which can set it between the 4-3 uh, the and the widescreen mode as appropriate. So it's pretty well automated. So as mentioned this is the um, 12 volt power supply, it runs at 6 amps and it connects into a series of different voltage regulators which are over here which um, convert that 12 volts in everything between 15 volts positive down to 5 volts negative. And the reason for that is that different console systems require different levels of voltages and uh, as such they've all had to um, they've all had to be adapted to do so. I put down on this side here metal connectors so that it's quite easy to see what's connected to what. Um, as you see there's a whole host of wiring so it does make it quite uh, easy to go back to it at a later stage and see which voltage connects to what system. This is the previous master controller that was covered on the previous video. I'm going to remake this uh, simply because the keypad area, when you put your piece of uh, overlay in, can move about. Um, although the joysticks are positioned very well, um, I've got better designs for improvement of those. And these buttons that were designed to uh, unscrew and screw into place so you can adjust them per console. I'm going to do that now with uh, probably with an LED different colour light um, if, I can, uh, if I can make that work. But the main thing I needed to improve on was the fact that when we're taking these sections, um, bear in mind each one is for a different controlling system, different console system, uh, I don't think this looked particularly attractive but I was more concerned with the fact that these traces would be quite easy to break. Um, over time. So I've come up with a system using jammer connections. This is 56 pins. I only needed to incorporate 50 from here but there's enough space in this Nintendo cartridge to put my 50 in. There's enough size on the cartridge also to put in what I need to put in and also these are custom made. So I'm going to utilize this now per console um, to incorporate the individual controller section and make it much more into a cartridge based system so you slot it into place. 
I was having to do a bit of modding, like for example, these connectors were a bit tight, so I'm uh, I'm making my own in effect to connect to the pins. So as mentioned, there's going to be between well 18 and 20 different um, unique console boards within the system, all original of course, I'm not using any um, um, any emulation or anything else in this system. So at the moment there's four included, so there's going to be plenty more, there's going to be a couple more CD based systems up here, the GameCube and the Dreamcast, and this space here will be for the other cartridge based systems. But at the moment we've got the Neo Geo, the Sega Saturn, the PlayStation 2, and uh, it's not included but it's just for the purpose of this video the N64. That's going to go back here but uh, if I mounted it in a place it would have obscured the view over here. Um, there's been a lot of modding work involved with this um, some board reduction but for example with this Neo Geo the cartridge was facing forward I've had to have mine working backwards so that's uh, involved quite a lot of rewiring to put it mildly but one of the main considerations with this project is to keep everything easy to remove. On the basis this is old electronics, at some point it will fail, need to be replaced or also repaired of course. So for example this entire section here uh, with containing the, the Neo Geo has two screws on the sides, one going downwards um, underneath the cartridge and a support here. Removal of those four screws will detach this entire section. Um, the CD drive unit basis for the Saturn is just screwed into the wall here. Obviously this is only a skeleton, it's not how the system is going to look at the end. But that can easily be removed. Uh, the Sega Saturn board is only secured in by three wooden struts which are connected to this MDF for the Neo Geo and one screw is holding this entire board in place. Um, the, the boards are all separated so they don't come into close proximity to each other. And as you see at the bottom is the PlayStation 2 with its own little fan. And also over here I've hardwired um, a PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 memory card in place so uh, the games can all be stored. There's no need to have, um, have them detachable. Uh, frankly the amount of games I tend to play. Um, I tend to play a game, play it through, um, so therefore I don't need more than a standard memory card, to be quite frank. But this is how the system is being built, so that it's quite modular, it's easy to remove parts, and uh, you can get to everything quite easily. There's also plenty of air ventilation. At the um, other side of here, there's a, a 12 volt air extractor, it's quite a powerful one that will suck the air in and then blow it out through through that uh, exhaust and keep the system quite cool. Okay, perhaps this video is to show some of the systems working. Um, I've only got two controllers uh, plugged in here at the moment. Um, but this isn't to show the controller, the master controller working, it's to show that all the consoles are working separately. So, the way we operate a system, I'm going to have a backstop on this, so I won't need to use my finger in the future. If we put on the, uh, the N64, then that's the third unit across, that connects the ground for the console, that, that selects all the video and uh, the controller parts if they were present, turn the system on. And as you see, there's an N64 game running perfectly happy. That's in composite mode, of course. We now turn the system off. Turn off its grounding. Turn off the connection. Uh, put in, for example, Neo Geo. So in practice, this is fifth up. I'm going to um, put labels on the buttons, make them look pretty, have the logo shining through. Um, I'll knock out that stage just yet. Turn it on. That's the standard arcade boot up that you get with the game cartridges. And there, of course, is Metal Slug X working its glory. I've got uh, three original cartridges plus a multi cart. 
can feel the fan blowing out quite well from here it's quite a good flow so that's going to keep everything working nice and cool again let's turn the system off off on the mains, off on the connection let's connect uh, Sega Saturn so second one down do the same with that lights on, just spinning I've had to connect um, the controller into this because otherwise it seems to think it's an audio CD which of course it's not, it's a proper game but this will now boot into one of the games and as you see that's all working quite happily let's wait for the logo to come up, there you go uh, if I selected it of course it will carry on playing the game so let's turn that one off same procedure as always Take it off, turn off the light, and the PlayStation, which uh, is number four. Again, turn it on, connect the button. Occasionally, being an old system, it does need a couple of uh, of boots. That just goes into into uh, reset mode. So let's turn it on. Of course, these buttons are going to be mounted at the front along with for example there's a little switch I've got here which you can see dangling which is for the Saturn to tell it that the disc isn't present so that I can change um, calendar and date and all that sort of stuff this is the only one that I've connected into the master controller connector to at least show that it's going and you may remember I soldered in the memory cards um, in there before It's a good game to show because um, if there's any issues with the uh, joystick, for example, um, having too much interference on the lines, then it will show it. There's no error, so it's showing the connectors working. It's now going to load up from the memory card. Um, let it do its thing. Please stop it on its way. There we go. And of course, into the game as per usual. card, making it work, and um, I want to use the tutorial just to show that part going. As I said this isn't to show the entire system off but what it does demonstrate is that the two CD based systems um, and two cartridge based systems are currently working in tandem as should be. There's a nice light showing exactly what you've got. Um, it's all been demonstrated to basically work. Um, next job I say will be to remake the cartridge the um, master controller and then get it all working and integrated within that this of course will be very quick this is working with the original uh, PlayStation 2 controller at the moment um, and as you see it all works absolutely no issues at all if it didn't there would be interference on the line Oops. And basically, you'd be looking at the floor, looking at the ceiling, um, at times you wouldn't want to, it just wouldn't be working. As you see, there's no issues like that here at all. So, that's the current state of play with the system. I'm going to get the master controller working and build in more of the consoles. Thank you for watching.